Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in a previous video I introduced you to the brand new concept of a Frozen collection coming in .NET 8. Now since I shot that video, quite a few things have changed with the implementation of a Frozen collection and Microsoft actually intentionally made them slower, kind of. In this video we're gonna see what that change is, why it happened and why we're actually better off with having that change in place because they now are way, way, way more usable. If you like that type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchampsters.com. All right, let me show you what I have here and I'm going to start by just quickly recapping what was added. So we got two new things, a frozen dictionary and a frozen set. Let's start with the frozen dictionary. A frozen dictionary is effectively a truly immutable version of that original dictionary. So what we're gonna get here if I show you the type explicitly is this frozen dictionary that you cannot add anything into. So if I go ahead and I say actually the add method doesn't even exist but if I try just to set something the dictionary will say you cannot do that. There's no remove, there is no nothing. All you get is the ability to read an item out of frozen dictionary and check if a key is contained in that dictionary. And that allows .NET to actually optimize for each heavily, making a frozen dictionary faster than a normal dictionary. The drawback would be that you actually take significantly more time and more memory to construct that dictionary. So the idea would be that you only create it on startup and then you maintain it throughout the lifetime of the application. You don't just create frozen dictionaries on the fly. As you understand, this makes it a very niche thing. And that's actually the same thing as the frozen set. So you would have a hash set and then you would say to frozen set, and now this frozen set that you get back can have its contains method be extremely fast, but you cannot add or remove anything. What you see is what you get. You take that and you use it for the lifetime of the application and it's extremely fast. Now, the very important thing is the impact of initialization. And in that previous video, I said that basically the use case limits them to just be something that you initialize on startup and you cannot dynamically create during runtime because of how more expensive they are. And just to visualize what that was at the time, this is what we had. So a normal dictionary to be built, you would take 570 nanoseconds, that is with 100 items, and you'd only have three kilobytes of memory, but a frozen dictionary with the exact same items would take 40 microseconds. That's significantly much more and also way, way more memory. It's almost 10 times the memory. It's just way too much. And sets were not too different either. Memory was equally as bad and performance was a bit better, but still very, very bad. Now, since that video, that behavior has actually changed. So what I'm going to do is bring in some benchmarks to see exactly what happened. All right, so let's see what I have in this benchmark. So I have a dictionary and a hash set and then I have a randomizer with the seed for each individual benchmark, which will deterministically generate the same data for all of them, just so I can compare apples to apples, really. And then I create a dictionary by passing down the pre-initialized dictionary into a new one, which behind the scenes will actually call the add range method. That is a private void method that will be very smart in optimizing how you add things into a dictionary. And this is really as close as you can get to comparing this new dictionary initialization with the frozen dictionary initialization. And then I'm doing the same with the set, but just to make my life easier, I'm just using the keys of the dictionary, which will be unique, and then call the two hash set or the two frozen set to compare how the two perform. So what I'm going to do is just run this benchmark for 100 items, and I want to see how now in the new .NET 8 Preview 3 version, these two compare. Remember, the old ones, way more memory, way, way slower in both scenarios. Let's see what we have now. So results are back and let's see what we have here. So now, as you can see, with the exact same code as I had before, we have very comparable performance, especially in the dictionary. Dictionary and frozen dictionary are very similar, both in performance and memory. It's a bit slower and a bit more memory inefficient, but other than that, we're very, very close. Okay, in terms of sets, the frozen set is twice as slow and twice as memory inefficient and a bit more, but it is still way, way closer than what we had before. But why would they do that? What is the compromise? Well, now these methods, the two frozen dictionary and the two frozen set, accept a Boolean. And that Boolean can be, of course, true or false. And that Boolean's name is optimize for reading. So now you can create a frozen dictionary or a frozen set and say that, hey, 
I want to optimize this for reading, which used to be the default behavior previously. So if I run this exact benchmark with the value set to true, I'm going to get the same results. What I'm going to do is actually revert that change and I'm going to add two more benchmarks for each case to see how it compares now. Here we go. So I have the frozen dictionary, the normal one now, the default behavior, which is again, very, very fast and you can use it to create immutable data structures very efficiently. And we also have the read optimized one, which is the old one, which is very inefficient on creation. Same with the set. I'm gonna go back and just run everything and see how they compare. All right, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see, as we saw before, the default behavior, very comparable, especially in the dictionary and also the set. Okay, this is a small change, but I wouldn't say that this is now prohibitive. You can totally use that. But now you see these read optimized version come back here with tons of memory and way, way slower performance. We have 71 microseconds for both of these two things just for 100 items, which is quite a bit. But if we now have a read optimized version, which is supposed to be the previous behavior, how much slower is the unoptimized version? Well, this is where we're gonna go crazy with the benchmarks. So now to compare everything, what I have is the normal dictionary and the normal hash set, then a normal frozen dictionary and a read optimized one. I get a middle point for both the dictionary and the set, because even though it doesn't really matter for that collection size, if you want to get the code and try it yourself, you would get a better, more consistent performance if you get a middle point. And then I'm generating all that data using the seed. So deterministically, I'm creating the unoptimized and optimized for reads version. Then I have the same initialization code as before. And then I have the reads from the middle point. So the middle string value on both the hash set and the dictionary. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and run everything to see where we stand. All right, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see now, let's just make this bigger. Initialization we saw before, but now reads between the frozen dictionary that isn't read optimized and the normal dictionary is a bit slower, but absolutely nothing prohibited. And the read optimized is a bit better, admittedly, but we're talking nanoseconds. This would never be something you realistically see. So I'm really happy with the default behavior change, especially in the dictionary, because I'm sure you're using dictionaries way more than hash sets or sets in general, because what basically this means is that you can now treat frozen dictionaries in the same way you would treat immutable dictionaries or read-only dictionaries and gain both the true immutability advantage and the performance. Now, admittedly, the unoptimized hash set version is actually twice as slow, but again, we're talking nanoseconds. This is not something you will ever realistically see. So that was never the point. The point was initialization and how slow it was with the frozen dictionary and set. Even with the read optimized version of a frozen set, I would say that this is not something you should even think about. And if you ask me, in my opinion, Microsoft, before they released .NET 8 version, should completely remove the option for users to choose if you want a read optimized version or not. I think it will lead to a lot of bad performing code because many people will say, oh, I want to optimize for reads, of course, without having the concept of maintaining that single instance throughout the application's lifetime, making personal collections very slow to create and eventually causing people to abandon them for something that doesn't really fit for that purpose. So if I was working on .NET, I would just completely remove this option. And I don't necessarily like that it is also a Boolean. I think an enum would be better because what if they want to add a different way to optimize this in the future? Would you just add another overload? I guess yes, but I think it is a concern of the data structure itself. But that's what I think. I'd like to know from you in the comments down below what you think about this change and if the .NET team should just completely remove the option and make the unoptimized version the default behavior, which is still extremely fast. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this possible. If you want to support me, it's really going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe more, click like this and the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.